Are you looking for a gift idea for a ham that pretty much has everything or is an active contester or likes satellite operation? Well, I got something to check out. This is the Geochron Atlas 2 4K. What's that? You want me to get out of the way? Okay, check it out. The Geochron Atlas 2 4K is a information center for ham radio. Actually, it does way more than that. It, it does weather reporting. It is also, of course, a clock, shows the day-night cycle. There is a ton of stuff that this provides, but Geochron recently reduced something called a ham radio pack, and it's a part of their premium line of services that they offer that connects directly to the Geochron system. Geochron has a history of making, at least how they got started, in making physical clocks that you would put on a wall and it would show the day-night boundary as the days passed. It was really helpful for hams, uh, paying attention to what the day-night cycle is. But with the Atlas II 4K and a lot of the products that Geochron has been producing, they're moving to this more internet-aware device that connects to a monitor or a television. The 4K in the Atlas 2 4K is, of course, its 4K output, and you can connect this to your computer or computer monitor or a home 4K television or something that, like a monitor that you put in the shack. Well, it became very apparent very quickly that to show you the Geochron in the greatest light, I was going to need to up my recording style a little bit. So I'm not going to be putting a camera in front of the Geochron. We're going to be looking at the 4K capture directly into my computer. So just like any other monitor or whatever there's capture cards i'm using an elgato capture card to pull the 4k directly off of the geochron and i've got the little remote here and we're going to explore the feature of this so you know exactly what you're going to get or at least what this offers if you're watching this on youtube there will be some compression that happens just from the nature of me rendering this video and then youtube putting a compression on it so just keep that in mind as we're going through it and uh consider that this looks really good in person, particularly if you have a 4K screen or something along those lines. Now, as we're doing this, keep in mind that I will zoom in at parts, but if there's any degradation, it's through the editing process for the video. This is what it's the full size screen. This is the highest quality image that I can capture with a 4K capture card. So keep that in mind. If you see anything start to get pixelated as I zoom in, it's just to show you a higher zoomed in look of the settings versus the, um, kind of whole spread out thing, which you may not be able to see on like a phone or whatever. Keep that in mind. Let's take a look. This is how I generally have my Geochron set up. I have my call sign there at the bottom. I'm displaying the maximum usable frequencies. There are those circles that you can see with the different numbers and we'll explain what's going on there. Also, there's a whole lot of DX, all those little lines that you see hip, uh, hopping all over the screen there. Those are different contacts that are being made. This is a very busy screen. I actually sometimes have the DX off just so I can focus on the maximum usable frequencies and then the satellites because I do have the FM satellites also displayed. Really quick, for those that are kind of new, a maximum usable frequency or MUF display is showing you what frequencies where two-way communication is possible. So if you see, I'm at the home location in Southern California, it says home right there on the screen. And if I wanted to talk to the East Coast, the maximum usable frequency is roughly about 22 to 23 megahertz. As you can see, it's kind of right in between um, me and the East Coast, right? Those little bubbles there. So it gives you a real quick snapshot of where you might want to try and make a contact. So 20 meters might be good and actually on up from there. So you could do 17, 15, et cetera. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the hamburger menu, that guy right there. And in fact, I'm gonna to remove myself from the display so we can just keep talking while you can see this great display. So the first thing we'll do is bring up the menu. This is the general tab, starts out right at the top left. I have the ham radio menu selected, but if you click down with the controller, the little orange box moves, and I can change this to multiple different types of maps. So there's the topographical map. Ooh, look at that, that's actually pretty good. Uh, oceanic, and it updates pretty much on the fly. Okay, so we'll go back up to layers here is the next one. Now layers allows you to change the opacity and the strength of brightness, so you can kind of get the idea. I don't think I need to go into a lot of detail with that one. A pin, I have uh, basically honed in on my location, not perfectly, but I'm around the Los Angeles area. So you can show a little pin there for home. You can add your own pins. You can add pins wherever you'd like. 
add as many as you want. Just click that little plus sign. Okay, so under live, so this is content that's getting pulled from the internet. It's a part of just the standard base set for the Geocron. So if you wanted to go to live COVID-19 confirmed cases, and there you go, you see numbers on top of numbers, which kind of gets confusing with the uh, maximum usable frequency. So we'll turn that off. Uh, I have weather on, I happen to like that. At any time, you can go to the little gear on the right-hand side here, click on the gear, and that'll show you, um, you know, you can add the legends, close the legends, it'll show you temperature, wind speed, precipitation, air pressure, cloud cover. Hit the back button. All right, moving right down the list. I do have the ISS being listed and satellites. I have the ham sats being shown. Not and and it'll come up when we get to the the ham pack here. But these are the standard base set. You get things like Iridium, NOAA, Amateur Radio is on the list, but they do a little bit better job with the ham pack. So that's where I generally pull from. It's one location. You can pull up active flights that are going on, as well as the moon phase and undersea cables. I haven't done this one. Let's. See. I'm feeling this is gonna be wild. Oh yeah, there you go. They're they're in there, but they're faint. I'm assuming you can go in here in the little gear. And we can bump this up. Oh, yeah, there you go. Get it to 100%. Yeah, look at that. See, now you can see the, the lines. Gets in the way of the muff chart, though. You see the, the little green lines that are right next to it. Those are showing you kind of the bands of propagation. So you, we're getting in the way with those uh, undersea cables. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. All right, going back up to the premium here, premium tab. Under the premium tab, there are going to be options for premium that you can click on, like premium earthquake tracker and the ham radio bundle. I'm not showing you that screen right now because it's got some personal information on it for me that uh, ties into my account. So just keep that in mind that you will have to go to the premium tab and make sure that you enable your ham radio bundle configuration. So let's let's first go in here and remove the DX spotting and, and show you what it looks like with a little clear screen. And let me go back. So there you go, that's the Geocron, kind of the way I normally run it. It shows you the ISS in that yellow line that's kind of undulating up and down uh, as a sine wave across the map. And then the smaller FM satellite show up is red and AO91 in particular, we've got the uh, footprint for that, uh, for that satellite right now. But you can see the green lines that kind of, uh, they look like little blobs, if you will. Those green lines are areas of frequency capability. So we have the band that we're in is generally gonna be good for again 25 megahertz or so from here to the east coast and if i wanted to talk to japan well what would i need to use i'd probably need to use um 20 meters because you can see from my home location at 17 meters just above my my home location with the little bubble all the way over to japan which says 19 and 18 likely i want to be below the maximum usable frequency so i would be using probably 20 meters would be what i would do so anyway back to the hamburger menu Okay, back in the hamburger menu, back in the ham radio bundle. Let's go to custom call sign. This is where you can change, obviously, the call sign you display and what color you use. I, you know, I like to put pink on there mainly just because it bugs people. So under the maximum usable frequency display, you can change things like the background opacity and the line opacity. I have the background opacity turned down, but if we go in here, let, let's crank it up a little bit and watch what happens. See the... Uh, <laughs> we get a pretty predominant <laughs> shading here, which could be important for some of you. See those blobs of yellow that say 28? Well, that's 28 megahertz, so 10 meter contacts might be possible. And further south, you can see that as well. Um, pretty interesting. So you can, you can amplify that if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. And there's a bit of a little write-up there to explain what's going on too. By the way, I leave it at 50. The maximum usable frequency layer shows the highest frequency that can be bent or bounced off the ionosphere at 3,000 kilometers. Ultraviolet radiation from the sun ionizes the F layer of the ionosphere, bending and bouncing RF signals around the world. The ionosphere's ability to propagate signals increases the length of the meter. Frequencies above the maximum usable frequency will pass through the ionosphere to outer space. But a highly charged ionosphere can bend even 6 meters and 10 meter bands during the day. 40 meters, 80, and 160 bands are useful at night. That's pretty cool. Good explanation there, too. So let's let's go back. All right, AMSAT satellites, you got two options primarily. You have FM and uh, linears. And if you turn one on, the other will turn off. So if we go to linear sats here, for example, FM sats will turn themselves off. You can see that there. I like to leave the FM sats on, though, personally, because that's what I operate if I'm doing FM satellites. 
And here are these satellites that it shows. So you can do AO27, SO50, IO86, AO91, and PO101. Just for the sake of it, let's go to the linear sat settings so you guys can see what it is. Linear sats, those are all the linear sats listed. I won't read them off, but if you want to pause the screen, you can, uh, you can take a look if, that, you're, if the one you want is covered. By the way, you can hide any of these, and you can show footprint as well on the satellites as they pass. So that's, that's some satellites you may not care that much about. So uh, let's go back into the opacity here. and Well, not the opacity. Let's go into the trail length, and we'll add, uh, let's add 30, 40 minutes. All right, Maidenhead Grid. Let's go ahead and turn the Maidenhead Grid on and show you what this looks like. And we're going to have to probably turn off the maximum usable frequency to give you a good view of this. And we'll leave the satellites on. Looking at the Maidenhead Grid settings, you can see the grid squares, right? You can see the CJ, CI, DJ just below Mexico there. But uh, one of the settings you can do is to flip this over to bright. So we're going to go ahead and flip it over to bright. And look at how much brighter the characters will pop in. There's that working, updating layer data down there at the bottom. Keep in mind that's going to happen from time to time as you change settings. Remember, this is one of those, there you go, boom, now it really pops. You can see how bright that comes up. So you get a good maidenhead grid view um, if you want that on. You can turn the labels off if you don't. You've got a couple of options, but I'm going to leave the brightness on because I do like the brightness and I may need that. But for right now, I'm going to turn that off. All right, so solar and terrestrial weather. Let's click the switch on that guy, turn him on as well. Again, you got that working logo there. Let's go into the settings for that. All right, so we have solar image, solar system, and aurora forecast. This may not make sense until we hit OK. We'll go ahead and turn that on, and we'll bring off the hamburger menu. And there you go. So now we should see... There we go. Now you got your propagation forecast, which again, <laughs> I hope this is coming across to people as, as you're watching this. I'll bring myself back in here. Above me, right, is you're going to get solar weather and you got your aurora forecast over on there on the right hand side. You can turn that off if you don't do aurora. But keep in mind that um, you're looking at it on YouTube, maybe a phone, maybe a tablet. This is kind of designed to be on a larger screen, a large monitor or a TV. It looks great on 1080p. Obviously, this one will go all the way up to 4K, and if you put this on 4K, it'll really pop. So keep in mind, you may not be seeing that in, in perfect clarity, but uh, trust me, it, it does show up clear. In the solar terrestrial weather, if you're in the settings, you have a couple of different options. If you turn the solar image on, that's going to be a little bit more representative of what you're probably used to seeing. So having solar image select, let's go back out of the menu system, and now you'll get a nice little display that you probably are used to seeing. So hey, right now... Uh, 80 and 40 is good, 30 and 20 is fair. Eh, about makes sense. Okay, so rounding this out a little bit, I'll, I'll take you back to my preferred settings, which is having the maximum usable frequency on. I don't like how bright that is, though, so we're going to have to go back in there. Uh, and we're going to turn on the AMSAT satellite, so we make sure we see those. Let's go into the maximum usable frequency settings, and we're going to lower that muff background. We're going to lower that muff background. Go ahead and drop that back down to 30 or so. Yeah, that's about, that's 20 is not bad. 30 is about where you want, I think. We'll go out of there. All right, so the last setting is the personal ADIF log. So go to the settings for that. And what you can do is uh, basically you can upload your ADIF file to geocron.com ADIF-upload. And that should show you a visual display of what is in your logbook. After making your geocron account, and subscribing to the Ham Radio Bundle, it'll open up a new menu option for doing an ADIF upload. So that's what we're going to do right now. We'll go to Choose File, and it has a maximum limit of 1,000 most recent logs. Actually, 1,000 logs. You can select whichever ones you want, and then it'll go through this processing as it's running through the 1,000 records. So just give it time, and it'll upload. Okay, so my ADIF layer has been uploaded. So now I can go back to the Geocron. And okay, after the upload, go back to Settings, Ham Radio Bundle. Go ahead and enter with the little yellow icon. Personal ADIF log. You can add in things like call sign filter, a particular country you're looking for. In my case, I just put it for the last 100 days and turned all the bands on. And now you can see it kind of in the background there. There's all the contacts I've made. Now there is a systems tab, but that has a little bit of um, personal information for that device. I don't know if it affects anything for connection, but that's where you set things like the intensity of the logo, the um, time format that you want to use if you're going to include seconds on the clock and whatnot. So let's, let's just back that out. So that's basically 
going back to the map that it's showing my last, I don't know, 100 CUSOs or so. Not bad. Got down to South America. That's always a challenge for me. Need to get to India, though. That's, that's, I got a couple of places all in, uh, all in the Asia area that I need more contacts in. I definitely don't have enough there. It's easy for me to hit Japan and uh, Korea sometimes, but difficult for some of the others. Let's go back, although I like seeing my logs. I, it doesn't really give me anything uh, <laughs> because I've already got them in the books. So what do you want? What do I want on? Well, I'll turn the uh, ADF logs off for right now. Uh, the DX spotting's fun because you kind of get an idea of where contacts are being made at that moment, and, and you can go in and you can set this um, appropriately for the last one hour like I have down here, which is, which is nice. In that case, you'll see what's actively happening. So there's yellow lines. You can see that kind of right by my house. When you have the, um, the legend on, it'll tell you what band is where the activity is, is going on, which is, again, nice. That's what you want to do. Like you can see in Hawaii, WH6HI is making contact with somebody. It's either in South America or South Africa. But anyway, so you can follow that if you want to. But for me, I like to keep it simple. I leave the DX spotting off. I leave my call sign on. I leave that maximum usable frequency on. And that's how I use my uh, Geocron. That's how I have it set up. So yeah, thanks Geocron for sending this out for me to take a look at. Uh, it's pretty cool. Again, it's the th kind of the, the gift that you would definitely get for somebody that wants something fun as kind of a showpiece in their shack. I know there's a lot of people who are really proud of their contacts, and I can definitely see how someone could go in and curate a thousand record log of all their really monumental contacts they made and upload that to the uh, to the service and then see it as a layer that could be kind of fun for people that are into that again it, there's a couple of people this could be interesting for people that are actively hunting dx people that just kind of want a cool clock in there uh, in their shack want to see solar data solar information as well so there's a lot going on here this is the atlas 2 it's kind of a big boy you can see that so it's probably not going to fit just shoved into your tv you probably don't want to run it that way in fact it's recommended that you use an hdmi extension cable which does come in the box so you can you can use that there is a wi-fi antenna that's attached but it also accepts cat 5 or cat 6 or whatever connection there is a power connection here on the side you do need to run power to this and it does come with the dongle for that and you must use this little adapter which goes into the USB 2.0 port there. That's what allows the remote here to work. Now the Geochron Atlas 2 4K, that device runs for $449, which is not inexpensive, I appreciate that. This item definitely caters to a specific ham. And because of the active nature of the ham radio bundle, it is a subscribed service, which runs about $6.99 a month or $70 for the entire year. A Geochron device, right, if you bought the Geochron, it's going to do the Geochron things of keeping time and, and using some of the standard services. But if you want the added layer of the ham radio effects or, or layers, then that's where the subscription comes into play. The construction of the device, although not something you're really going to see because it's probably going to be hidden behind a TV or somewhere out of the way, is, is very well done. It, it, it all looks well made. The only downside of the, the kit that I saw was the, the little remote here is a little on the cheap side. But in reality, you're really not going to be playing with it very much. After you set it up the way you like it, you maybe will go in occasionally to turn on a layer or turn off a layer, depending on the performance hit that you may want to avoid. Like if you just want to show maximum usable frequency, you'll do that. And this is a little cheap for that. But other than that, the, the system works exactly as expected. I think it's a cool item to have in your shack, being able to see it displayed there prominently wherever you have it. I think it's a really cool thing. And, and for those, again, who takes a lot of pride in their shack. They've got a lot of, you know, you know what I'm talking about, that really cool shack that's all put together. They're definitely gonna have a Geochron uh, in there and I think it uh, fits nicely and it, it serves a valid and useful purpose. So those are my thoughts on the Geochron Atlas II 4K. It's doing everything I wanted to do, which is again, largely the maximum usable frequency display and then to see where the satellites are at at any one time, that's a lot of fun. I am Josh KI6NAZ, if you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Tell me your thoughts on the Geochron in the comments below. I would love to hear them. Or if you're a Geochron user, how do you have it configured? Until I talk to you later, make sure to subscribe. I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Ham Nation. I'll talk to you later. See ya.